Hey guys, I finally got a chance to do some planting outside. Not exactly ideal situations. The ground's still pretty wet. That clay is kind of sticky. But as often happens, you know, when you're gardening, you're going to have less than ideal situations. You're going to have it too hot, too cold, too wet, too dry. And basically, you make the most of what you have. Today is Thursday, April 4th. We got rain on the way this evening and overnight, three quarters to an inch of rain, what the weather guesses are calling for. I see it on the radar a few hours away, so I know it's coming. I get asked a lot, how do I decide when it's time to plant? Do I go by the moon? Do I go by the farmer's almanac? Nope, don't use any of that stuff. I use the seven to 10 day extended weather forecast and I start looking at those low temperatures. And if I see a period when I'm in my window of opportunity, when I think it's time to plant and I look at those overnight low temperatures and everything looks good, then I'm ready to go. One problem though, sometimes you get a situation where it just rains and you can't get in the garden, that throws things off whack. And that's kind of what I had this year with the cold and everything. My plants in the cold frame were getting too big. The mustard was pretty much big enough to go ahead and start eating it. A lot of the other plants, the cabbage and broccoli, were getting borderline almost too big uh, where I would not be comfortable with setting them out that size, but I think they'll be okay. Last week I had an opportunity where it did dry up a little bit. I got the tractor in there and got all the soil tilled up pretty good anyway for the very first time, just trying to loosen things up. And then we had rain right behind it. So made another muddy mess out there and just really been hard to, uh, to get things on schedule this spring. Knowing the rain was coming and I had a window of opportunity here, looking at the weather forecast for the next 10 days looks really good. I went back out yesterday with the uh, walk behind tiller and just tilled that ground up a little bit to try to loosen things up some more so I could do some planting, get my fertilizer mixed in it. And I tell you, when you were out there in the hot sun and that tiller's bouncing around, and I mean, it's, it's a whole lot of work trying to keep that stuff going. I mean, it just, you start to break a sweat and everything and it's just really difficult to work out there like that. All right, so maybe it wasn't quite that hard. I had to put that in there for my friend. I'm still working over in the eastern part of the state. She had posted a video last year when she was in the garden with her tiller. One hand on the tiller, one hand looked like she had a cup of tea or you know a cup of coffee or something like that, just moseying on down the road. So I haven't gotten around to putting the cup holder on the tiller, but I can hold one in my hand and uh, hold the tiller with the other and still get the job done. One of the advantages to growing in a cold frame is the fact that I don't have to worry about hardening off the plants. They've been outside, they've been rained on, the sun has shone on them directly, they've had the wind blowing across them, ought to be hardened off plenty good. A lot different than if you're starting plants in your, in your house, in your greenhouse or whatever, and you have to go in and out you know, for about a week or so to get them hardened off. Really easy, just take them things out of there and stick them right in the ground. Another advantage to the cold frame is the fact that when you fill it up, you can put some really loose soil mixtures in there. And when it comes time to pull your seedlings out, it's almost as simple as just reaching your hand up under there, pulling that stuff up, separating everything nice and easy. You don't really uh, disrupt the roots anywhere near as much as you would just pulling them directly out of the ground. They separate pretty good. You end up with some decent little root balls on a whole lot of them, which make it a lot easier for a transplant. Now it's still kind of wet out there, very sticky, and when I'm putting this stuff in the ground, uh, it's not quite as easy as I would like. The soil is not as loose and pliable, but I really didn't have a whole lot of uh, choice right here. Looking at the weather forecast, that rain on the way, I needed to get some things in the ground. So I went ahead and got them in the ground, and I think they'll be okay. One thing I wanted to try was a method that I saw Rob uh, from BN Bob 01 down in Australia. Uh, I've mentioned him before about his aquaponic setup that he has in the backyard. He had made a video recently about packing the soil down real tight and then planting your brassicas, the cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, stuff like that in that really packed soil. Supposedly, it increases the production. I'm not going to be able to try it out here this year because with that clay as sticky as it is, I did not feel comfortable with packing that stuff down, but maybe somebody else can take a look at that video and try that method and then let everybody else know what your results were. One thing that helps when you're transplanting seedlings outside is to either try to do it on a cloudy day to give them that period of adjustment, or if you're looking at the forecast and you've got you know three or four days of bright sunshine, do it late in the afternoon to give them the overnight period to try to get used to uh, being outside and everything to give the, the plants a little bit of adjustment time. 
Right here I got a bunch of tomato seedlings that I've got coming on in the four inch pots all lined up down here between my Dutch buckets. And I start enough seed where it's, I don't have any trouble with seed starting, very comfortable with it, been doing it for a while, but I get asked a lot of questions about it. And I'm gonna give you some advice, a guy to go watch his videos. If you're somebody who is struggling with your germination process, you don't know when you fertilize your seedlings, uh, you, things just are not working out for you, go look at Navajo Pa 31. He's an older gentleman outside of Richmond. He would take you step by step by step through the seed starting process. He did it last year. He started the process again this year, showing you every single thing that he does along the way. If you watch him and you follow his method step by step by step, you should not have any trouble whatsoever with your seed starting. I will put a link somewhere on this screen and somewhere down below so you can go look at his videos. Very knowledgeable gentleman. What did I end up with outside? When I finished planting, I had 35 kohlrabi. I call them those alien turnips, the purple kohlrabi. Have no idea what I'm gonna do with that many, but we'll do something with them. Had 21 kale, 21 of that bright light Swiss chard, which had the yellow and the red. That's some good looking stuff. I only have four cauliflower plants. They didn't germinate so well. I have 45 cabbage, 28 of the early Jersey Wakefield, 17 of the early round Dutch, and 75 broccoli. 20 Bonanza, 55 Pac-Man, so set out about 200 uh, plants out there. Not too bad for just those five rows. What am I gonna do with all those? Certainly we don't need 75 broccoli coming in all at one time. That's gonna be way more than we can use. What we would do, we would do some uh, dehydrating this year. I'm gonna try to get the dehydrator running but pretty much 24 hours a day. Uh, when we had the carrots recently, I was able to, uh, we got one good run of uh, carrots, filled the dehydrator up, ended up by the time they were finished up, shrunk down, only had like three pints of carrots. But it'd be really simple when my wife gets ready to do some cooking and she needs some carrots to go in a soup or stew or whatever, just open one of those jars and scoop some out, drop it in there. We did blanch them before we put them in a dehydrator so they ought to rehydrate very well. So we will be putting up as much of this stuff as we can and the excess, I'll do like I have been doing all along. Just give it away, give it to somebody who can use it and try to be a blessing to somebody else. Oftentimes people end up in a situation where the pantry is full and they get in a year where they don't really need to add anything to it. So they wanna say, well, I would take this year off, grow just a little bit, just enough to have some fresh stuff to eat and we'll keep on working on with what's in the pantry and next year I'll go back and do that big planting again and we'll start restocking next year. Well, suppose you end up in a situation like this year when up and down the east coast it's been cold, rainy, wet, gardens are behind and you don't get your stuff in the ground early enough like you're supposed to, then the hot weather sets in so you don't get all that cabbage and stuff producing like you wanted to have, your broccoli, your greens and stuff, and then plus the summertime stuff it gets hot and dry so that doesn't make and you don't make the crops that you had anticipated and you've already depleted most of your pantry, you kind of up the creek without a paddle. So my advice to everybody is do this, plant as much as you can each year, maintain the supplies in your pantry, your cabinets, your freezer, wherever you are putting your food at. Give the rest away to people in your neighborhood, to people that can uh, benefit from it. There's nothing wrong with sharing what you've been blessed with. Try to be a blessing to other people. And at the same time, just remember, your family comes first. Make sure your supplies are stocked up. Give the excess away. Make the most of every opportunity you have each year to plant and grow things and grow food for yourself. And everything should work out just fine. So I hope that was helpful. Y'all take care and Lord willing, I'll see you next time. If you found this video to be helpful, informative, entertaining, or just downright funny, don't forget to subscribe.